all on the line. Well, you can see that Rodney Thomas is losing a little perspiration. <laughs> he just took over on that drive. He has over 100 yards rushing. Benatulius will kick it off to either P.J. Mills or Michael Thompson. And it's P.J. who takes it in the corner of the end zone. The touchback will bring it out to the 20. Well, this is a big series. There's a penalty flag down, by the way, back near the A&M 40-yard line. Most likely offside. Hard to say. Offside, second kick. So we'll see what Oklahoma will like to do. But right here, as soon as this is sorted out, with the Sooners getting the ball, R.C. Slocum's defense needs to do something. A one, two, three, and out. Force a turnover, do something, and get the ball back to their offense as quickly as possible. Oh, right here in the first quarter, first half, rather, Oklahoma. Huge, huge difference. And then you go to the second half, it's almost like a complete turnaround. They say A&M is a better team in the second half, and they're even a better team in the fourth quarter. Is that right, Steve? Let me give you this score. A&M last year outscored its opponents 112 to 33 in the fourth quarter alone. Okay, and then what about last week? They were nothing, nothing in the first half in the LSU game? Exactly. All the scoring was done in the second half, and one going away. I think it's safe to say this one is not over yet. The penalty will move the ball back to the 30. Benatulius will have to kick it again. And again, P.J. Mills and Michael Thompson are back for Oklahoma. This time, they're hoping they can get a run back out of it, even though, remember, that strong wind is at Benatulius' back. so the Sooners should have it first and 10 at the 20. 8.46 left in the game. We talked earlier about the problem of non-conference games, especially in away games or neutral sites. Now, that's not a bad record, 17. Uh, that's not. not real bad, but yeah, it is a little different, you know. It, it's a little bit. Not real bad. Wayne Chandler at fullback, replacing Collier. James Allen at tailback, going on in motion. Allen, big hole. He slips as he tries to cut at the 28. Covered right there by Mike Hendricks, the strong safety. You know, that's something he'll learn as he gets a little bit older, and you don't want to take any natural abilities away from a good running back. But he's going to learn to get his feet underneath him a little bit more and learn to come under control. You're going to see a hole right here. It's just unbelievable look at look what they did to tackleman great hole the iso 37 and he's up and running if he just gets under control here a little bit and i understand he has some heat coming from the outside mm -hmm. looks like he could easily hurt his ankle right there he planted that foot and went right out from under him you know at practice yesterday i saw a lot of the guys wearing tennis shoes out on this turf it's not real thick turf Pretty low to the ground, pretty hard. Actually, we have an AM player that's being attended to, and that's Larry Jackson, who tripped over Allen when he fell down. You can Jackson see the shoes was, that the guys are wearing. That's there. right. Jackson, Jackson was a player. And that often happens because Jackson, not expecting Allen to go down, is chasing him, and then all of a sudden stumbles over him. So it looked like Allen might have been hurt, but it turned out to be Jackson. It's going to be second down and a yard to go. James Allen gained nine. Well, Oklahoma running backs have been known to twist some ankles. Allen has gained 64 yards on 16 carries. Oklahoma's talking about maybe going to natural grass here. To Chandler. Going for the first down and getting it in the grasp of Keith Mitchell. Number 23, and he gets across the 30. A&M going to bring at least one linebacker each time now. I see they're in a, a blitz look that time. Corners, safety screwed down, man-to-man -man tight. Offsides, defense five yards, first down. 
Well, that'll wipe out the carry and give OU the first down on the penalty. And the word from the sideline is that Larry Jackson, number 37 for AM, may have suffered a concussion when he went down. And of course, they're not going to take any chances with that. Clock running with seven minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the game. Oklahoma leading 27 to 14. Reggie Graham replaces Jackson at linebacker for AM. On first down, Allen bouncing off one and getting out to about the 38. Hello. Reggie Graham, who came into the game, made the tackle. Let's go down to Dean Blevin. Well, Steve, a minute ago you mentioned the surface. This surface, this artificial one, was put in in 1981. A committee is evaluating it right now, and there's a real good chance that Oklahoma will go to a grass surface next season. They are making that determination now. But a lot of people think that you don't have any injuries on grass, but in fact, Jeff Frazier, the starting tailback, three days before the season opener, blew out a knee on grass on the practice field in a non-contact drill. It can happen anywhere, anytime, that's for sure, Dean. All it takes is one wrong step. And the camps are probably pretty equally divided over whether to go to grass or, yeah, of or replace the turf. Second down. Chandler breaking free in the secondary and getting a first down. Banging it into AM territory. Chuck Langston, the center, with another good job up front to spring it. This play has been in Oklahoma's playbook for so long. I can remember seeing it with Billy Sims when they did it absolute best. They're going to bring Connor OT. That's what it is. And they're getting ear hole shots on the guys coming across the line of scrimmage. And it opens up big holes just like that. Harry Stamps also with a good block, number 76. 290-pound tackle for the 210-pound sophomore, Dwayne Chandler. I'll tell you what, this crowd is awful quiet, aren't they? Well, they're pretty happy, I think. Sitting back satisfied right now. A&M fans that are here are trying to exhort their defense, and they need to stop this drive. Allen gets around the corner. Down near the 40, tripped up by Aaron Glenn in the secondary. Hey, we want to remind you that it's just one day till Super Sunday in the premiere of one of the shows you've been waiting for, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. It premieres tomorrow night on ABC at 7 Central Time. It's a bird, it's a plane, no. <laughs> it's a running back. <laughs> There's your future cheerleader. Hey, I'll bet, you know, it's a tradition when A&M scores that the dates kiss in the stands. Right, right. I think there are a lot of other schools that do that, I too. think so. I think so. There might have been something going on that OU <laughs> fans with the scoring they've done today. Second down, about four yards to go. Allen again, looking for an opening and finding one. Ball down in the secondary by Donovan Greer, but it's another first down for Oklahoma. Up front, they seem to be getting a hat on the people they need to get hats on. But right here, Allen just does a good job of ad lib. Greer makes a good one-on-one -on -one tackle out there. Right here, you're going to see everything start off to the left side of your screen. He's designed to cut back, but not quite this far. He runs away from Atkinson, which is surprising. Greer, good job. Setting your feet, moving your feet, getting in front of the man, making a good open field tackle and a very good running back. Oklahoma now with over 200 yards rushing, 202 to A&M's 143. Sooners first and 10 at the A&M 30. On again. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all, as A&M got excellent penetration. Keefa Chatham, number 99, and 89, Edward Jasper, a redshirt freshman in there. Keefa Chatham, a senior out of Waco. You can see the Aggies right now starting to stun a little bit. It's like diving over the top there, trying to make anything happen. Never say never, but boy, I tell you, time rolls down. It's getting close. A reminder that if time permits today, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report, featuring scores and highlights from all across the country. And when you have the date on college football as usual. Gundy running off the left side, picking up short yardage. Jason Atkinson and Junior White, the free safety on the stop. Well, you can see it to run, pardon me, Ron, with 350 to go in the game. Yeah, you can see, you can always tell when something goes wrong because Watson Brown, he just, 
he lets everybody know on that last play, that last fumble, he jumped all the way out to the numbers, almost. <laughs> I think he had to pull him back in with his headset. Well, the officials already had to stop play one time to get Oklahoma back on their sideline, and Watson Brown may have been the number one offender. Three and a half minutes to go. Oklahoma chewing up yardage in the clock. Allen tripping over his own man. Falls forward for a couple. He'll be short of the first down. It'll bring up fourth down. And probably Blanton. See, OU accomplished what they wanted to accomplish in this drive. They took some time off the clock. The clock is still running right now. And now they're going to line up for uh, looks like a field goal. They're probably going to let it run all the way down until they get it to lay a game. 